Hi guys, my name is Michelle and I create hair, makeup and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about protein moisture balance. So if that sounds like something that interests you, then keep watching. protein moisture balance. Let's first talk about protein. Protein gives your hair strength and it gives your curl structure. And moisture gives you that beautiful luscious shine, that bounce and that beautiful elasticity. But how do you understand what you need on a particular wash day? Very simple, you perform the stretch test. So on your wash day, just before you wash it, Take one strand of hair, either it could be on your head or something that is already shed and put it in between your fingers and all you're going to do is try to stretch it. If as soon as you try to stretch it, the hair breaks, then your hair needs moisture. Now, if you take your hair and you try to stretch it and you see that yes, it is stretching 30% and coming back into shape, that means that your hair is balanced. What you can do is either use exactly the same thing that you used on your last wash day or you could give yourself a little bit of protein and a little bit of moisture and balance out your wash day. But if you take a strand of hair and you see that it's stretching, 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 stretching and as soon as you let it go, it looks all limp and weird and the curl pattern is all funny and it's got all wonky and it doesn't look like your curl pattern or you feel like it stretches to 50% and then after that it just breaks. That means your hair needs protein. If that is the case, if you have low porosity hair, add one product that contains protein in your lineup and if you have high porosity hair, add two products in your lineup that contains protein. So again, let me make this very simple. If you take the hair and you see that it stretches 30%, all good. That means balanced. If it breaks instantly, then you use moisture. And if it stretches, 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 and then eventually it breaks or it becomes limp, then give it protein. Now, this method is not foolproof, but this is a very good way to assess what your hair needs on that day. So I would say do it just before you wash your hair. If you're liking this video so far, then leave me a like. So we already know that color treated hair and heat damaged hair needs more protein, right? But I would say that don't necessarily go by this rule when you're assessing how much protein or how much moisture your hair needs. It would not be advisable for you to have like a calendar where you say like, hey, once a month, I'm going to give my hair protein or twice a month, I'm going to give my hair protein. It is not as simple as that. As we go through this video, you'll understand why I'm saying that. So stay Stick around and don't think your hair does not need protein if you have low porosity hair that is not damaged. I'll say it again. All you have to do is before your wash day, assess your hair's needs, see what you need and then pick and choose and set your lineup for that wash. Now, I would say that it's very important for you to have a separate lineup for protein and a separate lineup for moisture. So you have your protein products and you have your moisture products. Let's look at some of the products that I already have and look at the ingredients and let's divide them into protein products and moisture products.
ओके सो द जनरल रेकमेंडेशन इज दैट लेट्स से यू नीड प्रोटीन ऑन दिस वॉश डे देन पीपल वुड टेल यू दैट जस्ट चूज टू प्रोडक्ट्स एंड कीप इट इन योर लाइन अप दैट हैज प्रोटीन एंड दैट शुड गिव यू इनफ प्रोटीन फॉर दैट वॉश डे बट imagine i'm using a shampoo that has protein and a gel that has protein now where am i focusing the shampoo i'm focusing the shampoo only on my scalp and what am i doing with the gel it's merely coating my hair will this take care of my need for protein on that wash day when you choose a product you want that protein or that moisture to actually enter the cuticle and so when we choose a product for protein or moisture we actually want that protein or that moisture to actually go into the hair cuticle so ask yourself which are the products that actually penetrate the hair shaft and go into the hair have you come to your answer yes it is your deep conditioner and your leave-in conditioner because these are products that are actually being given enough time to actually penetrate the hair shaft and actually go into the hair also remember that when you're shampooing your hair you're only focusing on your scalp you're not even applying that shampoo to the rest of your hair which means to your lengths secondly 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 i have to add this point a shampoo the only function of your shampoo is to cleanse your hair okay it is not to condition your hair it is not to give you slip it is not to deep condition your hair it is not there for any other reason your shampoo is only there to cleanse your hair and therefore when you're thinking about the function of a shampoo when you're thinking about hey is this shampoo good is this shampoo bad just think about one thing is this cleansing my hair is this shampoo removing that build up is this shampoo removing that dirt that debris that product that has been sitting on my hair and my scalp that is all you need to focus on when you're thinking about your shampoo does it cleanse your scalp properly your shampoo is not for detangling your shampoo is not for moisturization guys we have deep conditioner and conditioner for that right so your shampoo only has to perform one function and one function alone and that is to cleanse your hair so a lot of people might have this question hey what about protein overload what about moisture overload but i'm not going to focus on that in this video at all we've just about completed curly hair 101 and we're going on to the next step i do not want to complicate things at all for you guys so i'm going to put a pic picture up here and these are basically your signs of protein overload and these are your signs of moisture overload now please don't focus on those slides that i inserted at all today we're talking about assessing what your hair needs okay we're not focusing on hair rehab today we'll go on to that as we progress in this journey for now let's just focus on protein and moisture and please don't ask yourself this question that hey i have low porosity hair how many times a month should i use protein in my lineup Please 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 don't make this mistake of thinking that hey I have low porosity hair my hair does not need protein or hey I have low porosity hair how often should I use protein I will not be able to answer this question this question can be answered by you best because you are the person who is actually living with your hair breathing with your hair you are the person who can actually touch your hair and feel your hair and therefore you are the best judge when it comes to assessing what you need do not rely on curly hair wash day calendars for the month they help to a certain extent when it comes to helping you to remember to clarify or to chelate but when it comes to protein moisture balance please don't focus on curly hair calendars just perform the stretch test and that should be a very good starting point for you to understand what to give your hair on a particular wash day so protein doesn't exactly latch on to your hair but it has the ability to stay on your hair despite several different washes so even if you go through several washes there is a possibility of that protein still lingering on your hair which is why again i'm saying don't make these blanket statements that hey i'm high porosity i'm going to use protein every wash i would say assess your hair's needs before right before you wash your hair and then choose your products accordingly Okay so another little note if you're adding heat with your protein or your moisture treatment this is going to kick things up a notch 
because this is going to encourage your hair to further swell up and then it's going to give the protein more spaces to latch on to, more area to latch on to. So of course your protein or your moisture treatment with a bit of heat is going to be so much more beneficial than without. So if you add a little bit of heat to your DC treatments, then your treatments are going to be so much better for you. They're going to be so much more beneficial. Now, do not get confused. I'll be making videos on moisture overload and protein overload. I'm sure this video is already pretty big. So what is your main take home from this video? A few points actually. Firstly, have separate lineups of your products. So look at your ingredients. So tell yourself, this is my protein lineup and this is my moisture lineup. Look, when you're making protein lineups and moisture lineups, with your products is always great to have right shampoo conditioner leave-in conditioner deep conditioner gel all of it to be like protein or all of it to be moisture but it doesn't matter essentially all i'm telling you is try to focus on your deep conditioner because that is going to sit on your hair right for 30 minutes while you deep condition and your leave-in conditioner because this is something that is going to sit on your hair for the entire week so at the bare minimum what you need to do is get yourself two deep conditioners and two leave-in conditioners don't worry about your shampoos being protein or moisture for now it's not going to make the biggest difference so for example if you're having let's say a protein wash day and you're using a moisture shampoo and you're using a moisture conditioner it doesn't matter as long as your deep conditioner is protein i mean has an ingredient that has protein in it and a leave-in conditioner that also has an ingredient that has protein now when you're looking at your ingredients only look at the top five because the top five ingredients make up 70 to 95 percent of your product whatever comes after five could be less than one percent as well so don't focus on that if you see protein really low in the list don't consider that to be a protein product so take homes number one look at your ingredients segregate your products into protein and moisture secondly definitely focus on your texture and your porosity but more important than your texture and your porosity would be that stretch test that you perform right before you wash your hair now let's say you've used uh, two protein products right and you tell yourself that hey i'm doing this but as soon as you washed your hair and you did the stretch test i would say perform the stretch test right after you wash your hair on your dry results to see if your hair feels nice and balanced if you feel like hey no 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 i've gone overboard this was probably too much protein for me then definitely use only one product with protein in it and see how it goes if let's say you have high porosity hair, you've used two products with protein and you feel like, oh no, my hair is not balanced. My hair still needs more protein. Then what you could do is, yeah, change your shampoo, change your conditioner, add some more products, go little by little, don't go extreme. Don't make it such that every single product has protein in it. Like try to increase it. So maybe like add in a shampoo that has protein. If you still feel like, yeah, this is not enough protein. Because look, foreign products, you notice that when it comes to a protein leaf or a protein deep conditioner, right? They have two, three, four ingredients that are protein ingredients. When it comes to products that I own, I've noticed that the protein is like you know one source of protein or maybe one source of protein is high but the other one is really down and low in the ingredient list so it's not like I've found like a protein DC or a protein leave-in where you know it is like it has a lot of protein in it it just has one source of protein in it to the best of my recollection I think that's what it is so don't get overwhelmed maybe your hair needs much more protein but start slow and slowly slowly progressively build it up if you feel like okay I've used a conditioner I've used a deep conditioner and I've used a leave-in but again this is still not enough protein for my hair then you add another product to your lineup that has protein and slowly slowly you'll find the right balance for your hair fourthly do not use the same products for every single wash day i would say it is very very important whether you have high porosity hair or low porosity hair to at least own two products that are protein and two products that are moisture when it comes to your deep conditioners and your leave-in conditioners you might not use both products equally but have it in your collection because once in a while your hair is definitely going to need protein especially smaller proteins 
Point number five, no matter what you're doing, if you feel like things have gone wrong, all you have to do is clarify your hair and get rid of all of that buildup, get rid of, strip your hair completely, use a shampoo with a sulfate and that is going to help you in case things go awry. So you always have a safety net when it comes to clarifying. So do not freak out if you've gone wrong, everybody goes wrong. So do not freak out if you've gone wrong. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has failed wash days. You live and you learn. All of this, everything that we're talking about here on this channel is pretty much trial and error. So relax, you're doing fine, okay? Lastly, Remember to clarify and chelate your hair once in four to six weeks. If you have low porosity hair and your hair gets built up more frequently, then uh, make it more frequent. So see what works for you. Don't keep using protein, moisture, protein, moisture. And going through wash day to wash day, it is very important to reset your hair, to detox your hair, to strip your hair of all of those products that you're using. So please ladies, do not forget to clarify and chelate your hair regularly. All right, so that was it, ladies and gents. Hopefully you gained some value from this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment with your feedback. If you have any video requests or you have any questions in general, please leave them down here in the comments because guys, I think my DMs are starting to cause me a bit of anxiety. There are far too many. It is not possible for me to answer all of them. So yeah, if you have any questions, please leave them here in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate you sticking it out with me. All right, guys. Thank you. If you made it till the end of the video, then let me know in the comments down below. If you did, then you're a real one. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Michelle and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.